Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome back to part five of Growing Trees on Mars. When you download the model from the NASA website for 3D printing the rover, you also get a set of assembly instructions, you get a parts list, and information for putting it all together. I've got two coats of silver on the Mars rover body now. Let's go in and have a look. So here's the main body now with two coats of the silver paint on it. So if I hold it up to the light now, the light doesn't shine through the white plastic. You can see on the body here that some of the lines from the 3D printing are still quite visible. Um, I'm hoping with the white paint that uh, and a bit of sanding and filing that I can get rid of all those 3D printing lines and make it look smooth. I'll go in now with my first coat of matte white paint. Yeah, the white paint is filling in the grooves quite nicely. I've got my first coat of white on the body now, and it's helping fill in all those 3D printed texture, all those little kind of lines. Um, it's a little blotchy because the white doesn't cover the silver very well, but I think, you know, a bit of sanding and a second coat, it'll start to look pretty good. The Mars rover body has its second coat of matte white paint on it now. It's looking pretty good. The lines from 3D printing are slowly disappearing. I've started painting some of the other components on the Mars rover and I can start to assemble these because I can paint them when they're all together. All these parts just snap together so I'll start by assembling the robotic arm to the front. You just clip in this piece right here. Like that, that snaps in and then there's a whole bunch of little pins that get 3D printed. I think there's maybe 16 total. I'll just take the flashing off those and they pop into here like that. And then I have the arm I can assemble. Goes like this, that goes in there and then this goes on here. So I'll get another pin and I'll put this one in here, like that, and this one in here. Oh, wait a minute, does that fit? That doesn't fit, hold on. Maybe that's not right. That looks better. Then, this pin goes in here, like that, and then, this one goes on like this. Like that. And this goes on here. Like that. That's all looking very good. And then the, the head, this is like a drill head and it has various instruments on it for sampling the soil surface. So that gets pinned on to the end of the arm. I don't know how stiff this arm will be in the end. But uh, we'll see if it supports this unit. And this goes on like this. There we go. There's the arm of the rover. And this is the arm that it takes its own selfies with. So it can come around here like this and it can take a picture of itself. This is the chem cam that goes on here. So I'll put the pin in for the chem cam right in here and then we'll attach that. There we go. That's attached. It's a little floppy. I know this one's a little floppy too, but not too bad. I may have to, you know, permanently attach it on. I don't know. I can put the suspension together, but I can't assemble it to the vehicle until it's all painted and detailed. I was just test fitting the suspension onto the rover body. I haven't pushed the pin in all the way, but uh, that's what it looks like. And the, the wheel would go right in here, I guess, somewhere about there. 
like that. I'm outside here in the greenhouse working on my aluminum oxide. I'm adding more baking soda to it. It's still foaming up really nicely. You can see it's gone from a level down here and it's foaming up and it'll foam out the top if I don't keep stirring it to get the bubbles out. So I'm going to keep adding baking soda until it stops bubbling and then I have to wash the mixture which will get all the salt out of it. Wow that one's really reacting in there. It's below freezing out today so I'm thinking maybe the cold weather is slowing the reaction down which is probably a good thing I don't know. Yeah so we'll keep doing that. I'm glad I bought a big box of baking soda because it's using quite a bit. I think my level's down to somewhere about here now, right here. So, you know, I've used almost half the box already. It says hundreds of uses like cleaning for your whole kitchen. Doesn't say anything about making Mars soil. Whoa, this one's overflowing here. Get that bubbles out. I've been adding baking soda for over half an hour now and it hasn't slowed down the bubbling reaction. It just keeps bubbling away. I guess it'll slow down eventually. I put the Curiosity rover together, just enough to see what it looks like. I still have a lot of work to do on the model, but uh, I just wanted to see how big it is and, you know, kind of get a general feel for it all. The real Mars rover has a lot of detail on it, as you can see in this picture. That just isn't on this model. You could spend hours super detailing a model like this. I thought I'd better test and make sure the rover fits inside my greenhouse, and it does, it fits quite nicely. Here's a side view of the rover in the greenhouse. There's not a whole lot of room, but there is room, and the wheels have to come in a bit when I finally assemble it, so it should look quite good. When I was outside adding the baking soda to my aluminum oxide mix, I noticed it was starting to crystallize and I thought it was freezing because it was below freezing outside. So I moved them closer to the little easy bake oven I had there and it just kept crystallizing. It got dark out so I put all my bottles in the basement to keep them above freezing and in the morning this is what I ended up with. A dry kind of powder. So I believe that is my aluminum oxide and it's got a lot of salt in it because I added all that baking soda. So the next step is to wash all the salt out of this mixture. I'm going to wash all the salt out in this fish bowl so we can see what's happening. What should happen is all the aluminum oxide will settle to the bottom and the salty water will be on top and I can decant that to just get my pure aluminum oxide in the bottom. So I'll use a spoon and I'll just start adding all this to the fish bowl. There's some liquid in it still, but it's pretty, 
pretty dry, basically. Almost like rubber, this aluminum oxide solution. Yeah, that's the pure aluminum oxide, that rubbery stuff. Now, there's probably a lot of contaminants in here. I'm sure that wasn't pure aluminum, that foil I was using. But, it'll be good enough for our Mars soil, that's for sure. Getting lots of this. I did use almost half the roll of aluminum foil in making this aluminum oxide, so there's a lot of metal in here. Almost reminds me of transparent aluminum. You know, from these Star Trek movies. This is almost transparent aluminum. You can see through it. Yeah, this jar is full of a jelly-like substance too. Wow, that's really cool. Look at this stuff. It's Wow. <laughs> Hard to believe that came from aluminum foil and acid and baking soda. Look at that. It's like rubber. Maybe I've discovered a new type of rubber. Wow. It's really, really pure in the bottom here. Look at that. Wow. This is the coolest stuff ever. I gotta touch it. Very rubbery. It's like some fancy dessert, but I sure wouldn't want to eat this stuff. There's white stuff in here. I think that's probably the baking soda. Stuff that didn't get dissolved. I'm sure the reaction neutralized and I probably put way too much baking soda in here. But that doesn't matter. It washes out with the water. Look at that nice goopy stuff. Okay, that is it. I'm going to add my distilled water to the aluminum oxide. And this should wash out all the salts in this solution. So here I go. I'll give that a stir. So the salt is water soluble and the aluminum oxide isn't. And it should sink to the bottom. It should settle on the bottom. And then I can decant off the watery layer on top and just slowly kind of give it a good thorough washing. All right, I'll keep filling this up. Huh. And I'll give it a good stir again. Maybe break up some of these chunks, I think. I imagine these chunks will dissolve in the water eventually. Well, I guess we'll see. I think, I think they're probably chunks of salt or something. I don't know. Looks like all that rubbery stuff has dissolved in nicely. All right, we'll let that settle and see what happens. I've left the mixture settle overnight, and you can see in the bottom here, there's a line right here. This is my solids, and this is my liquids up top. So I'll remove the liquid on the top, and then we'll rewash the bottom. All right, so here I go 
well, to remove the water. So this water is fairly clear. You can see it up to the light there. So hopefully this is just salt water. And all my aluminum oxide is still in the bottom there. I'm down to the layer at the bottom. Let me just have a look at that layer. Here it is here. You can see it's that jelly-like substance. Just try and break up any. Oh yeah, it's all it's all this gelatinous type substance in here. Yeah. So that's good. It definitely didn't mix with the water. I'll just try and get some of these lumps out. Okay, I'll add another layer of water to it. I've got my aquarium full of water now, so I'll give it a good stir. I've noticed that some of the lumps have a little bit of a red color to them, and I think that's because hydrochloric acid tends to have iron in it. So when it oxidizes, it turns a bit of a red color. Okay, so we'll let that settle once again. It's only been an hour after the second wash and it's settled already to the bottom so I can decant the water off the top. So here I go. I'll add the water now for the third and final washing. I'm using hot water now. I think that'll dissolve more salt. Maybe, I don't know. That's mixing it up really well. There we go. So again, I'll stir it all up. I don't know if I need to, but I will. There we go. Still some lumps in there, but not too many. Spinning around. So I'll let that settle again. It's only been five minutes, and you can see the solution has settled quite nicely. There's my aluminum oxide in the bottom and my water on the top. Yeah, so I'll let it sit for another, you know, 10, 15 minutes. I'm just getting the last bits of water out, so I'm just gently tilting this. And then I can decant the last layer of water. This stuff smells like sandpaper. Uh, aluminum oxide is used as an abrasive so you'll find it on, you know, wet sandpaper. They use it for polishing lenses. So it has a lot of uses. And I think that's about all the water I can get out. I'll just have to steam off the rest of it. So, yeah, I'm left with quite a, a mixture that looks like gelatin. Very nice. Okay, let's head outside. Hi everyone, I'm outside now. I've got my Easy Bake Oven ready. I've got tin foil on the tray. So I'll start to add my aluminum oxide mixture. All right, here I go. There's two cookies, three cookies. Four cookies, five, there's a baker's half dozen. I might as well just kind of pour off the liquid here. Gotta evaporate that away. Don't want to put too much in the pan. All right, we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Into the oven you go. I will put that on a low heat. 
Maybe uh, I'll try 200. Just to evaporate all the water away. Then we may turn it up higher towards the end. The oven's starting to heat up. Not much reaction yet. I'm starting to get some steam coming out of the oven now. It's a really unusual warm day today. Really nice outside for late December. The ducks are enjoying themselves outside today. They're on the hill over here. Hey guys. Here's my wife with their two silkies. And in the rain, they kind of get wet and they look like punk rockers. Kind of like Billy Idol. And this one's not looking at me at all. I think it's trying to avoid eye contact. Mm -hmm. This one's okay though. It's starting to bubble inside here now. Not much was happening, so I've turned the temperature up to 350. There's some steam coming off, but not a lot is happening. So I'm gonna turn the temperature up to 450 now. That's getting a little more smoke going, but not much. It is bubbling slightly in here. It's still a liquid, I tested it. And we'll just keep cooking it. Everything's looking good. Out here on the benches, the moss is definitely nice and green. My clump style cedar here definitely uh, grew well this year. It needs trimming. And you can see down here how the roots have grown in the soil. Yeah, you can see them like sticking out of the soil all over. Even over here, you can see all these surface roots. So it probably could be repotted again this spring. It did really well in the soil this year. My little cedar spirit tree doing well. Here's my apple tree. Still got that really nice shelf fungus on it. So this is the live vein in the apple and it comes up to here and it's growing you know, really, really tall. The other live vein is over here on this side and hopefully it'll do well too, I don't know. It's one of those things you just have to accept it for what happened and what it is. My large forest could definitely use a cleanup. There is green moss under there. Yeah, that could definitely use a good cleanup. And it needs pruning too. There's a lot of shoots that I haven't touched yet. Like this one that's growing you know, quite tall and vertical and it's ridiculous. Got to take that off. Little spruce is doing well out here. It's still nice and green and so is the moss. The sedum's looking really green too. Here's my other larch. Looking quite good. Yeah, lots of lichen on the trunk. I gotta get the toothbrush out and scrub that. My little island is doing well. Here it is here. This has got the, I think it's a native red pine on it. I thought it was a Scots pine, but I'm pretty sure it's a native red pine. The moss is really growing well here. It's uh, sort of taking over the rock, which is an island. Yeah, it's doing well though. And the Austrian pine, and the moss on that's looking really good. Can't complain about that at all. You can see all the buds. There's a lot of buds inside here too. The interior of the tree. Yeah, that'll need some work next year. It's my cedar trees. 
doing okay. My other one doing all right too. It's grown quite a bit this year. It's changed quite dramatically from when I first collected it. I'll be working on that this winter. Here's my linden tree over here, the ugly tree. <laughs> it's certainly covered in lichen, that trunk, I can tell you that. Wow, that's hard to believe how much lichen is on that trunk. Yeah, so it uh, kept its leaves this year. Interesting, and it's doing really well. There's my white pine, my native white pine. Northern white pine. Doing all right. It's been quite a few years since I collected that. It's doing quite well. There's my one weeping willow from that ancient one in the park. Doing really well. And there's my other willow. It's doing quite well also. Branches are nice and yellow. My American Elm is doing quite well, too. Lots of buds all over the branches. A lot of lichen on that, too. My silver maples here, this group of seedlings, and my red maple, this one over here, are still outside. They stayed outside all last winter, and they did fine in spring, but... Uh, I will be bringing those in shortly. Keeping my eyes again on the weather and when it starts to get cold, I'll bring them in. These are also red maple seedlings and they're from the biggest red maple I've ever seen. I call it the mother maple. It's just huge. It's in one of my videos. My cedar hedge did really well this year. I've got my three main big, big cedars. And then these ones were given to me, the little ones. I planted them in between. And there's one in between over here, just a little one. And I think there's two over here. No, there's just one over here. And well, I did have two somewhere. Let me, maybe it was over here. Yeah, there's two here. There's one, two. And then over here, I've got another couple planted here. They're just small too. That plastic table that I made to go underneath my little spruce tree here, it's still looking really good. It, it stood up to the weather fine. It still looks like, you know, kind of realistic moss growing on rocks. Yeah, so it, it survived the weather quite well. The mixture has been cooking for at least 15 minutes so far, and it's still a liquid, so that liquid is definitely not water. It would have steamed off long ago. Let's go in and have a look at it. So here it is. So you can see it's still very liquidy. Sort of like a paste now. It's drying out definitely, but... Interesting. Anyway, I might as well add some more while I've got the oven door open. It's amazing. I thought this stuff would be bubbling away like crazy, evaporating all that water I put in when I was washing it, but yeah, no, not much reaction at all. It does have a bit of an aluminum smell to it. But, you know, it's, it's not as bad as the iron oxide. I placed a skid beside the oven to stop the wind blowing on it. I think it was cooling it down too much, the cold wind, so. It's starting to look like some strange alien planet in here. I've added the last remaining aluminum oxide mix. So now I'll close my oven door here and cook it up. 
There we go. It's begun to rain out, so I've moved operations to the back porch here. The mixture is sort of looking like oatmeal now. It's becoming like a, a powder. It, it is supposed to turn to a white powder in the end. I don't know if mine will be white. It looks like mine might be more of a tan color, but who knows once it's, you know, totally dried out. It may turn a white color, I don't know. I can see it actually crumbling now. Uh, the structure's kind of falling down on itself. It is still smoking away the oven. Definitely something smoking out, boiling off, or doing something. Yeah, so I just saw it crumbling again down there. Weird, it looks like it moves. Now watch when I tap the uh, oven, it'll all sort of collapse. But you can see it's reducing to a very small amount. I used to have that tray full and now it's kind of just a shallow layer in the bottom. My water barrel is full again. There's a bit of ice floating in it, but uh, there's enough water that I can refill the barrel inside the plant room. I do that every time it thaws outside. I keep the barrel topped up in the plant room and that gives me enough water to last the winter. We haven't had a lot of sunny days. These poor plants, they get shut up inside here for the winter and hopefully in January the sun will come out and they'll get some sunnier days and sort of start perking up. But yeah, it's been pretty cloudy all of December. I had to leave the project for a while, so it's nighttime now. So I'm back to cooking the aluminum oxide. I don't know if you can see it in there. It's a very Martian red under the glowing oven. The plant room at night looks kind of like a church or something. The Church of Holy Bonsai. I finished baking the aluminum oxide. This is the final product. Let's have a look at it. Here's the aluminum oxide after heating it. It's a powder. You know, fairly large pieces, but if you rub it, it goes down to a fine powder. It's an abrasive and it smells like sandpaper. That wet, wet and dry sandpaper. Yeah, it smells exactly like that. So it didn't turn a white color, but I'm happy. The light tan color is quite good. Here's a spoonful of my red oxide for comparison of colors. I think my quantities worked out quite well. I need over twice the amount of iron oxide as I have aluminum oxide. And I think, you know, by weight, that's what I have. The Mars Project is making good progress. And this is the end of part five. I hope you join me for part six, where we'll be mixing the soil and planting the trees. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>